Good day to you again and welcome to another edition of Facing the Nation. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you so very much for joining us. As always, you know, I say for what promises to be an informative hour. We're dealing with two issues this week. One, the first, we're going to be focusing on the education sector. This is nothing strange to you. And I'm really so happy that, um, well, first off, let me tell you who the first guest is. Um, no stranger, definitely no stranger to the program. He's become like family now. Um, Professor Ive Log. Griffith is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana. Welcome back, sir. Delighted to be here. Right. Delighted to be here anytime. Great to have you back. Well, the, I must say this. It's Professor Griffith is really, really um, encouraging. He's an encouraging person because this is someone who is willing to come here as often as possible and give you an update with what is happening at the University of Guyana. And this is not only a first for this country, for this program, but it's a first for this country to have someone who's willing to come and tell you what they're doing, what the shortfalls are, how they expect to fix it, how they expect to improve, and so on. So that's ha what's happening on the first half of Facing the Nation today. On the second half, uh, I am expecting some of the, maybe two or three of the members of the Ghana Public Service Union to come on the program. Now, some of you who have been um, familiar with news or fair, keeping abreast with what is happening with uh, the news in Guyana, you would know that there has been a protest, and I think it's, it began last week and it continued this week. Um, some younger members of the union are calling for the resignation of Mr. Patrick Yard, who they say would have been serving for about three decades now. But we're going to get into all of that on the second half of the program. And of course, they're going to come with reason why they think that he should step down and what they in, intend to do and how they plan to probably um, improve the union. But for now, we're going to talk to Professor Griffith and the University of Guyana. Of course, this is bringing his, what has now become his very regular update and briefings on where the University of Guyana is going. Professor Griffith, again, thank you so much for returning. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah. Great. I know you have a whole lot that is happening, that is going on in terms of improvement, but in the last few hours or so, the University of Guyana and industrial action, those two, I should say, two sets of words are being mentioned in the same sentence. It seems as though, and people have become immune to it, uh, every now and again, every year it happens, whether it's an old vice chancellor, a new one, whatever you want to call it, whoever's at the helm, people find a reason and they protest um, the heads of the University mm -hmm. of Guyana. What is happening with this current industrial action launch, launched against you and your team? Well, Malika, thank you, but before I answer the question, let me say two things. Okay. One is that I'm committed to being the best vice chancellor I can be mm -hmm. for the primary constituency of any university, and that is the students. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I will say is that I respect the right of any worker, faculty or staff, to protest, to conduct themselves in a way in which they feel it's appropriate. But having said that, I want to assure you that I will do everything with my team to ensure that the primacy of the responsibility that we have, which is to enable students to get the best possible education experience, the primacy is at the top of my agenda. Okay, great. Having said that, you know, there's a wonderful, now dead, former senator of New York and former political scientist Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Mm -hmm. He said something way back which I'm finding I need to tell people about 
these past few weeks. And he said, each of us is entitled to our own opinions, mm. but we're not entitled to our own facts. Sure. <laughs> so let me tell you what some of the facts are. Okay. Because there are is a confla there is a conflation of fact, which means that people are putting incorrect information out. Oh. And people are enabling others to buy into that misinformation, which is opinion rather than fact. Mm -hmm. When I got here in June of last year, I reached out to the unions. I reached out to the student leadership. I said, your important constituencies, my recommendation is that we adopt a collaborative I started a monthly meetings with the union leadership, with the student government leadership. I gave the union heads my cell number. If there's an issue, call me. I said, public invective does not help us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sending nasty emails doesn't help us. It may make a few individuals feel good, About but it does not mm -hmm. help the university. But Malaika, we are in an, in an environment where people have perhaps so practiced some dysfunctional behaviors that they feel that that dysfunctionality has become the norm. And in the context of that dysfunctionality, mm -hmm. in the last uh, few days, there are some people who have been not only conflating fact and opinion, but wanting to accentuate dysfunctionality. Fact is, I have said from the time I got to the University of Ghana, we have got to improve salaries for staff, academic and non-academic. Not only have I said it, I put in my budget request last year for a 30% salary increase, knowing that I wouldn't get 30%. But I wanted to send a signal both in the internally in the university and to the government to which I was making that request that we've got to take salaries importantly and significantly to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Now, I only got 56% of my requests on the recurrent side. And so I have to relook the entire package. That entire package is going to the council next Thursday. My request to the unions is, rather than try to force the issue of a percentage, and I'll come back to a percentage that you're hooked They're on. hooked on, yes. Uh -huh. Let us have an opportunity to look at the whole package. I'll tell you something which is a fact that many people don't know about or pretend, pre prefer not to know about. Our university doesn't pay very well compared to other universities. But beyond the base salary, there are a whole host of allowances that people get. And I'll tell you, housing allowance, traveling, responsibility. We've got a bicycle allowance there. We've got entertainment allowance. We've got responsibility allowance. We've got transportation allowance. So when I go to a request a sum of money, I've got to look at the whole package, not just the base salary. Uh, just uh, if, if I can pause you there for sure, a, please, a minute, Professor. In terms of the allowances, because I'm happy that you... And uh, viewers, I always like to remind you to be very careful with where you get information from and, you know, what is it that you swallow and what you hold on to. And I'm happy that Professor is bringing all of this to the fore. The allowances. I know you probably cannot be specific here because it's not necessarily ethical, but specific here. But how um, is it a majority of the staff that the allowances would cover? Yes and I can be specific in a few instances. Sure. Traveling allowance of $21,960 per month, applicable to all managers. $32,940 per month, applicable to another category. 17000 this is just traveling allowance. <laughs> uh, per month, another category. 17000 per month in another category. Entertainment allowance. 9,600 per month, certain category. 6,720 per month, not a category. 4,800 per month, not a category. Housing allowance, 20% of basic salary. Rental assistance, that is there. Mm -hmm. Annual academic materials allowance. Annual leave, one calendar month and five days for certain people. 
three months for other people, vacation leave, medical insurance. So it is not hmm, only medical a too, which medical is medical insurance. It's like strange for us because not every you, and you know it, viewers. Not whether private or public, not many organizations that um, medical the medical insurance would cover. And depending on the, I think the level of the company that you're at too. So it's interesting that you've brought that to the fore. And this is only part of the list. Our university spends millions of dollars a year on tuition waivers. Matter of fact, just yesterday, I authorized tuition waiver waivers for three staff members. Mm. Hundreds of millions of dollars every year. So it's not the, just the basic salary that I've got to consider. I've got to consider other things. One of the things that, and it's in a press release that I put out, mm -hmm. this university has not only done injustice to what people get by way of salary and benefits. It's done injustice to pensions. We took a decision last year, and beginning January 1 this year, no one gets less than $20,000 per month pension. So it is not, people are looking at only the salary and forgetting that there are a whole host of other things. There are specific areas in this university that I have as points of pride on staff side. If you go to the bookstore bindery, you'll find that all the women in that unit now are regularized. Some of them have been at university 14, 15 years without being regularly employed. That's rectified. If you go to the maintenance department, you'll find people who were in a month-to-month -month contract they are annualized contracts. People who are in a month-to-month -month contract, month -month contract for years. Month-to-month contract for years regularize. So it's always interesting to take part of a portrait and skew it. Mm -hmm. People are looking at a number. You know, Mark Twain once said sometimes you've got to be careful with numbers because there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. You've got to look beyond that number to see mm -hmm. what are some of the other elements. But my commitment, and I said this at the town hall meeting I convened on Monday of this week, it's not a question of whether we will propose salary increases. It's a question of how much. How much? And you've got to consider where you're going to get the money from. What is the union asking for? for They're asking for immediate negotiations. They're asking for me to tell them what the percentage is, and they're hooked on a 15%. And I said a couple of things. There is a relationship between paying something and having the money to pay. And I've got to consider that I'm looking at an almost $500 million gap in this budget coming up. I also have got to consider that the, the government is not the only source we're trying to set the basis to get money from. We have a number of things going. I created a deputy vice chancery for philanthropy alumni mm -hmm. and civic engagement, setting the stage to get funding from other states, setting the stage to get funding from alumni. So it is not only what we need to do in the context of what the government does, the industrial action that people and the, the viciousness, you should see some of what's on Facebook. I see it. It is going to create a climate of people not wanting to help us. And I said this to the town hall meeting. I said this to the unions. Professor, I, I, we have to stay on that note, and I, I want to talk about the um, Guyana Council, the University of Guyana Council meeting soon. But before we do that, and I must ask you this out of, and I'm sure those at home, especially people who are a bit sensitive, you know, as, as I am, is this emotionally draining in any way for you? Because oftentimes these things and it's and people don't run because they're weak and I, I think sometimes we forget that people don't always run because they're weak people run because they want peace is any of this emotionally draining for you i was born in august i'm a leo <laughs> i don't bend easily i don't break easily there is a campaign now to get rid of me i want to assure all the people in our nation I am not going anywhere. This campaign 
has an element to it that has nothing to do with salaries. I'll tell you what it has to do with. Please do. I have begun to say to the university community, if you're going to be here, I expect accountability. I expect performance. Mm -hmm. I have begun to say, if you're teaching, you've got to teach the whole semester. If the semester ends, you've got to turn your grades in. And so I've begun to put performance issues, accountability issues, and some people don't like it. Oh. I took to the Finance and General Purpose Committee last year a horrible report of the thousands of grades that are outstanding. We introduced some sanctions. I informed the union formally. I made it known to the university community I will be acting on those sanction possibilities. If you don't want to be the university lecturer, go someplace else. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to be teaching with us, you've got to teach a whole semester. You should hear the complaints of students about lectures not showing up. You should hear the complaints of students about lectures not teaching the whole semester. We have a case right now where one lecturer taught three times for the whole semester. As a student, so, so the, the people have agendas other than, than what that is because right, you're trying to tighten things up, and and, and you know. Viewers, I mean, I can't let Professor Lord. What he's saying is true. As uh, uh, fortunately, right, as, as the, the the course that I'm doing as a student, I don't experience some of those things. You know that professors talking about uh, with the lecturers, at least not with the ones who lecture me. But I have um, there are other persons in other courses and so on. They complain indeed. Mm -hmm. So it is sad now that you want to tighten up the system. And strangely enough, this is a system that we have been complaining that the University of Ghana is too mm -hmm. slack, it's too loose. And now that you want to tighten it up, mm -hmm. the campaign. To get rid of you. I had a member of this university graduate class, 1969, call me last October from Canada. Mm -hmm. said, Vice Chancellor, I'm so glad you're doing something about these late grades. Yeah. That's been a perennial problem for years. We have heard students because some of them can't get, <coughs> some of them can't get jobs because, because they, don't have, the they don't have the transcripts. Some mm -hmm. students have not been able to get postgraduate scholarships. I am saying the time for that to end is now. Okay. Absenteeism, mm -hmm. big issue. So some people have their own agendas, but I want to assure them I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Great. I like that strike coming from you. Um, we ha we still have a number of things to get to. Um, I know a little birdie told me about uh, fundraising activity you have coming up, and I think a team is going to Antigua. But before we talk about that, the University of Guyana Council said to meet, you did say this earlier, mm -hmm. on the 30th of March. What are some of the things expected to come out of discussions and decisions that can possibly be made? And possibly, fast forward, and, and viewers mind, I'm not taking the side of the unions here, but try to somehow, you know, get this settled in a very um, professional and calm manner. Mm -hmm. Well, I have always been true to certain values. Mm -hmm. One of those values is transparency. And so the unions were told, most recently at the meeting I convened on the 27th of February, although that was not the subject of the conversation, I told them what the three critical items on the agenda will be. And I told them some of these items <coughs> that are going to be there are going to create some stress. One of those items is the budget, a revised budget for 2017. That revised budget is going to be introducing both increasing salaries, uh -huh. but mindful of the fact that you've got to find money from some place to increase it. It will be, among other things, putting on the agenda tuition increase. Tuition increase. Mm -hmm. Second item on the council agenda will be the establishment of the School of Business. We call it, <coughs> we call it SEBI. School Sebi. of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation. Losing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> but Part of what the vision for SEBI is, is establishing a new campus, Camp on Lamaha Streets. I've yes. said it publicly. I remember, here. Yes. yes, you did speak and about so that building. <coughs> I held a town hall leadership forum last Wednesday, invited the entire academic board, mm -hmm. invited the union, invited the students. The unions decided to boycott it. We discussed the budget issues, 
We discuss SEBI, we discuss the downtown campus. Those are the three critical things going on the agenda. Professor, you did explain earlier that when you first took office, you met with them and you were basically collaborating with, it, with everyone. Is there any way that the unions can possibly say, okay, our cries, our complaints are not being heard? Or can they say, well, we have given the professor enough time to possibly turn it around? Is there any way that they can say that? Because I'm just trying to think about all the ways that they can try to come at you. They have said it, some people. And they've said it not in the context of dealing with the facts, dealing with the, in the context of having their own agendas. We issued a press release that identified some of the specific ways in which we responded. And I responded not because of the union, but because it was necessary for the university, not only to staff issues, but to student issues. <laughs> the seven women in the binary bookstore who regularized the 20,000 minimum pension as of January this year, the people in the maintenance department who are regularized. Mm -hmm. And that is only part of the list. If you look at the equipment side and the facility side, you can see differences in the classroom. You can see differences yeah. being planned. Yes. Every time I have a major meeting, I invite the unions. Matter of fact, the president was trying to explain to me why they were absent. I said, you don't have to explain to me. But I'll continue inviting you. This week I had Minister Kathy Hughes invite them. They didn't show. This week I had Minister of Business. This week I had Minister Raphael Trotman. <laughs> this week I had the Chinese ambassador. The downtown campus, I organized a tour, invited the union. They didn't show. So as I said at a public meeting at the town hall, I am going to continue inviting you. You will exercise the choice as to whether or not. So the claim that no consultation, erroneous. The claim of not being inclusive, erroneous. People have their own agendas. But I am not going to let private agendas undermine what goes to the students. Okay, great. Viewers, if you're now tuning in, of course, this is Facing the Nation. My first conversation today is with um, the Vice, Vice Chancellor of the University of Guyana, Professor Ive Lord Griffith. If you're now joining, those of you who want to catch the entire conversation, as you know, all of the Facing the Nation conversations are uploaded to YouTube, and they will also be on uh, Facebook a little later on in the day. And I did say to you, coming up on the second half of the program, I will be talking to those members of the Guyana Public Service Union and uh, the fact that some people feel that the president has served for three decades and they think it's time for a change. But we'll be talking about that a little later on. Professor Griffith. Antigua. You're, I, t I understand the team is going to Antigua. And, and, and viewers, this is important because the professor did talk about all the things that his team would have done so far, but it, we always have to remember that's not the importance. All. That's not right. All. That's the thing. <laughs> it's not all. But we always have to remember the importance of funds, money. We can't do anything without money. Let's talk about this fundraising. The, the, the team going to Antigua and Antigua and St. Lucia is not only about fundraising. Okay. It's about building a pipeline for recruitment. I took a team to Grenada earlier this year, met the Prime Minister of Grenada, met folks from the Mary Show, PA Mary Show Community College, met the Minister of Education and International Business, met Guyanese in, an, in Grenada, some of whom are University of Guyana alums, setting the stage for their support, some of it is financial. And so we're doing a similar project in St. Lucia and Antigua Mm -hmm. I would not be going, oh. but it's a combination experience for the same reasons. Fundraise, set the stage, and you don't fundraise by just going and expect somebody to give you the money right away. You have to cultivate. You've got to set the tone. You've got to help them feel comfortable that what they're going to be giving to is worthy. So I don't expect, as was the case in New York, as is the case in Grenada, that we're going to come back with $100 million. It is setting the stage for people to feel comfortable giving forward. And I think that is what some people are expecting. Professor Griffith is going here. He's sending this person there or this group there. And, you know, we, and it, unfortunately, we want to see the changes 
almost immediately. Mm -hmm. We know that is impossible. I, I think that is some of the reasons the pressure keeps mounting too. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to let the pressure keep mounting, preventing me from doing what the right thing is. Wonderful. And the right thing is set the stage for later return on the investment. Mm -hmm. Set the stage on recruitment. We're going to be finalizing an MOU with TA Marichaux Community College to have students coming. We're going to be doing the same thing in St. Lucia and other places in the Caribbean. We have got to pick the low-hanging fruit. The low-hanging fruit is the value that we offer in some degree programs that are not readily available at cost-efficient price, as they are here. I'll give you one example. This Monday, I had the closing dinner of a program I started for student leaders, mm -hmm. the Vice Chancellor's Etiquette Training Program. We hired Carnegie School of Home Economics, and the student who was the hostess, agriculture major from St. Kitts, so I said to her, tell me why you came to university again. She said, the only places in the Caribbean that have reputable agriculture degree programs are Guyana and Trinidad. <laughs> and when you look at the price comparisons, it is a better deal to come to the University of Guyana. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of that. Even though I'll be proposing raising tuition, mm -hmm. the tuition that we're going to be having is still not as high as other places. other places. So we've got that as a, an attraction. And so we'll be using that as a magnet to reach out to people in the Caribbean, in else, in other parts of the world, to say, here are the things that we offer. Here is the reason you should come. So the Antigua and Lucia trip is a combination of setting the stage for fundraising, building connections with alumni who are there and other Guyanese also a recruitment pipeline. And I'm assuming this would assist with branding because both the, the last time you would have been on this program, you talked about the importance of branding Absolutely. the University of Guyana. So Absolutely. how is that branding coming along in addition to this, uh, these trips that, that are going to be taking place? We had a meeting last week on branding. The branding is a combination of branding and merchandising. And we've got a reality that we don't have a lot of investment money but we need to get started. So we're going to be starting on the branding. We're going, to be we're going to identify X, and we haven't decided what X is going to be yet, number of UG merchandise products. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hiring a student, dynamic student. She's going to be the project assistant to help us move that. We've got a company that does work at the airport, that sells at the airport. We're talking with them to have them be. Uh, I, I send my director of strategic initiatives to Ministry of Public Infrastructure, but the airport. Okay. And Minister Patterson said, tell the Vice Chancellor it's going to be too costly for a UG store at the airport. So we'll partner with somebody else to sell our products. So the merchandising and branding uh -huh. mm -hmm. going hand in hand. Uh, we've got to find a way to have it on Amazon, and that's a, a separate conversation. Mm -hmm. But of course, that also is part of the package. And we're going to have a special branding marketing project for the School of Entrepreneurship. Okay. We're going to and hit the ground important. running yeah. as soon as we get the approval. Uh, we're going to be hit the, hitting the ground running on that critical part. And in the next, within the next two weeks, and this is a component of the branding, we're launching a new website, tackling it on many fronts. I did ask about, the, again, the last time you were here, and I have to keep uh, referring to that, the last time you were here, um, the campus, again, the classes would not have been resumed as yet. How have you found the responses from, in terms of the improvements that uh, there are on campus? And uh, viewers, I can tell you, the, the improvements are there. Um, you, you, you feel the difference, and you see the difference in many areas. Apart from the people who seem to want you gone, the logical section, how have they responded in terms of these changes and these improvements for the University of Guyana? Positively. People recognize that some of these problems are not amenable to a quick fix. Ah. We've got some intractable long-term challenges, like the water system, the sewage, hmm. the power. Since I was here last, I wrote Minister of Public Infrastructure. We gave us no objection. We are accelerating the conversation with the Gifland Group to purchase our power from Gifland. 
rather than GPL. That will allow us to have the stability, the reliability. Part of why Minister of Telecommunications was there with me on campus with her team is to take to the next level, not only, and it's reflected in the news release, not only to Wi-Fi connectivity across the campus, but we've got a campus in Burbese. We have IDCE centers in Anna Regina, in Linden, in New Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. We're lifting the services there. If you go to the Dennis Irving Hall in, in Good for Acting, you'll find Wi-Fi service fully there. So mindful that some of these issues are long-term, not amenable to quick fix. There are appreciable, demonstrable changes that are there. And only this, this week, we had an advance in the process to construct and rehabilitate some new facilities. We started a project last year of creating a student center. We've had invite, if you go to part of the campus by technology, you'll see a big sign that says future home of the student center. Mm -hmm. The national tender board approved on the 21st of this month, moving ahead with that moving ahead with constructing a, a complex for science and mathematics, approved moving ahead with rehabilitating the Pier Street property. We're going to make it a facility with housing, approved moving ahead with agriculture, renovations in agriculture. So not only have things been done, things are in the pipeline to be done. And I'm excited about these new projects. And we're going to have a ribbon cutting on the 30th. We're going to have a ribbon cutting of a new facility, a classroom building, 250 students. Yes. Right there on campus. Right there on campus, campus. 12 o'clock, before the council meeting, we'll be having a ribbon cutting to open a new facility. And by, by June, the registry will be moving into a new building. Three weeks ago, I decided that the Center for Communication Studies had suffered enough and they are going to be occupying the second floor of the vice chancellery that was there before. My office has moved into a new facility. Once the registry moves out of the old vice chancellery, the Center for Communication Studies will be moving in. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of things we're doing, a number of things that have been done, one, 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 all in the right direction. Well, by now, with the amount of updates I've gotten from you, I don't think I can call them one, one, one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you did talk about what's uh, coming up next, ex uh, especially in June. I hope to have a professor back here either by June or uh, a little before June to give you more updates. And again, um, Professor, I, uh, you know, on, on behalf of the students of the University of Guyana and, and on behalf of Guyana in general, I have to thank you very much for doing this. You're not a chancellor who seemed to be behind. And you did say, well, viewers now, you know, he's not a mouse. So, and he's not emotionally trained and we're happy about that. Nope. And I, I want to congratulate you and we expect to see much, much more changes. And thank you so very much for coming. Uh, let me end by not only thanking you, Malika, for this office, but I want to thank the thousands of supporters in the private sector, mm -hmm. the civic community, the thousands of alums around the world who are moving with us. I got an email early this week, Sunday night, from an alum in Hawaii. Said, Vice Chancellor, I usually get your newsletter from another friend in Atlanta. Please put me on the mailing list so I can get it so directly. Can get it. And I said to him, you should consider coming to the conference in July. He said, I will. I said, you should consider supporting the Vice Chancellor's Fund for Strategic Initiatives. You know, it is that fund that I use $1.2 million from to help 10 students and two staff members mm -hmm. who were burnt out in Cummings Lodge. Yes. Each person got $100,000. That didn't come from government money. It came from money raised by people in the business world, in the alumni world. So those people who are focused on a 15% or whatever, I wish you well in wrecking the prospects of those people who are willing to give all that we need to do is build an inclusive tent, not let the few people who are consumed with conflict 
direct the project of rent. And 14 percent, um, both you and I know. I mean, I'm not, I'm no math whiz, but we know that 14 percent will not <laughs> do damage. Thanks so much again, Professor. You're welcome. All right, viewers, this is Facing the Nation. If you're now tuning in, you missed a great conversation with Professor Griffith, but not to worry, the conversation will be loaded to YouTube and to Facebook a little later on in the day. We'll take a very quick break and come back with those members of the Ghana Public Service Union. This is Facing the Nation.